Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Uh, late May, getting ready for the summer. One of my favorite people, the guy who told me to start a podcast. This is a fact. Yeah. yeah. What you are? What is his? What is the name? Luis Gomez. I'm Louis kidding. Luis J. Gomez. I always have to say Luis Gomez. I know. Why is it so important to Jay? Uh, well, I mean, look, at this point, it's not really important. Not for your, you. Not for you. It's your name. It's your I, name. If I didn't correct you, it would be... Right. It would be weird. It's a whole thing. It's no. a thing. Yeah. I just... Paul it, F. I, Tompkins. If you call Paul Tompkins... If he, if he'll Paul. never be on this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'll never, ever come up yeah. in my life. I understand. Is Paul F. Tompkins on this show? Yeah. I, uh, no, it doesn't really... You know what it is, honestly? Why I use the J? Truthfully? Yeah. It's because when I was a, a child and I was practicing my autograph, the loops of your the, signature. Yeah, yeah, my autograph. Okay. My I love that you call it an autograph. It was no, but I was I wasn't practicing my signature. I was practicing an autograph. That as a you kid. were gonna one day give to people. Yeah, I was gonna okay. one day, which is a weird thing because nobody asked for autographs. I mean, nobody wants an autograph. But the J looked so good. The Louis. It does look J. Good. Gil, yeah, you know, very. No, loopy. my Instagram handle is Tim J Dillon. There's something about a J that's nice. It, it's it. It puts that stop between the two words. Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Louis J. Gomez. It's Tim yeah. J. Dillon. I get it. You know, we're we're talking about a lot of things. Obviously, the economy is a horror. Yeah. And you have a child. You know how much things cost. Food. Yeah. I gas. try. I try not to pay attention. Of course. Genuinely. Genuinely. Yeah. I, you just don't are, pay attention. I I don't. <laughs> If I were I like to, that. I'll drive myself fucking crazy, it's dude. Good, yeah. Gas prices. If if my life was dictated, where I was walking around going, dude, <laughs> these fucking gas prices. <laughs> yeah. I, it, look, it sucks, and I know it drives the price up of everything, right? But at the same time, like that's not the game I'm playing. I'm right. not. I'm not driving down the gas prices. Right. So what's the point about caring? It's about It's a great it? point. You can't affect it. Yeah. But it's just a truism. It's out there. Yeah. It's out there. It's tough. Of course. I only, uh, you, you know, you play your cards. That's what I say. I agree. Yeah. You got you got to do what you can do out there. But you're also, you have a business. You, you're doing well. I'm doing all right. There's yeah. a lot of people. I'm not doing fucking Tim Dillon well. Yes, you are. No, I mean I'm not. Tim, you know what Tim did yesterday? He goes, yes. <laughs> he, I'm in his apartment and he goes, I'm going to go buy a car. And I'm like, all right, that's cool, dude. And I was telling him about how Big J has a Jeep. And yeah, I was, like, it's real. I was like, a Jeep's actually uh, like under the radar, yeah, like fucking a really dope a Wrangler. So then he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get a Jeep." Yeah, and, gonna, and I was like, "Really?" I was like, oh, "I was surprised." And he was, yeah. like, I was like, "Yeah, good for the money. I like it." Yes. And then he came back two hours later to bring me to the gym. Yeah. In a fucking Bentley. Bentley Flying Spur. And I was like, "I thought yeah. you were getting a Jeep." He's like, "I'm getting a fucking Jeep." I left the apartment thinking about getting a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and but here's the reality. You know, I didn't end up getting the G. I had not slept. Here's a fair point. Yeah. I had not slept in 48 hours. I was all fucked up from Australia, from the jet lag. Yeah. When I got back. And I told him, I gave him a whole big speech about financial responsibility <laughs> the night before about how you have to save your money. Mm. Things don't last forever. And eventually we're probably going to have to live in a, a state like Florida, you know, because it's less expensive to own property and the taxes are better. And I said, we just got to be smart about our money. Of course. I gave him a real big speed. And the next day, I bought a, a Bentley. Bought a Bentley. And, yeah, uh, I've always wanted this ro car. Ro rolled off the lot, $30,000. Just melts off of it immediately. Well, sure. That's, yeah. Of course. So. But here's the other thing. Um, those cars do have a resale. A, a decent resale. Yeah. Because th there's always going to be somebody that wants that car. It's yeah. not going to be as much. It's I, I, you know, what's funny. It's just a car that I would never, I would never get that car. It's right. incredible. It's beautiful, yeah. right? Yeah. But I just feel like if I were to get that car, I would also need a driver. Like Ben should be driving you around. <laughs> hey, by the Bentley. way, by the way, agreed. <laughs> yeah, it really should. I, be. I, 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 hey, 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 hey! Zero <laughs> argument for me. Zero <laughs> argument for me. Uh, in that, in that thing. Did me well, and Tim, the, me and Tim thing, are in such different yeah. worlds, right? Like he pulled in. I thought we were going. I thought we were going to his apartment before yeah. we were going to lunch yesterday. Yeah, and he pulls into the Beverly Hills Hotel. Yeah, and I start to take my bags out of the back, thinking we're home. He's like, "I don't live here, you fucking idiot." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "No, no, no." <laughs> well, it's it's a um, we've been lucky because we have a friend 
who has a really, really big podcast, and he's had me on a bunch, and he's the most influential podcaster in the world, and his name is Tony Inchcliffe. Yeah, <laughs> and by doing that show so many times, I was exposed to lots of people, yeah. and I was able to get a, get a, 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 a big group of people listening. So yeah. we're, we're happy about that. Um, I also don't have kids. I'm not going to have kids. Yeah. I don't have a family. It allows me to kind of misbehave. I feel For like you to buy a Bentley instead of funding your kid's college is criminal. Right. It's criminal. Of course. But that's the freedom. The but Stephanos, it's also, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you do those things yeah. because, you know, you feel fucking good. And it's that nice. fuels something else. That inspires. Harder, yeah. that, you know, sure. So it's like if you want to fucking have a Bentley, you're not, you're not going backwards now, Tim. No. And that is an investment into your own self-belief and your own sort of way of doing things. And I look at spending money as an investment. I, yeah. I, I take stupid vacations. You know, I, I try to have nice things, you know. Right. Um, I just, I'm classless. So when I say nice things, like I got an inflatable hot tub and I'm like, dude, I'm fucking killing it. Right, right, now. right. You know, right. I'm not, I'm not a. You have nice things people would get with Marlboro Miles. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like nice things that would come out of a cigarette catalog, you get, you know, like. Those, I guess a, a yeah. Marlboro leather jacket. Yeah, though, you'll get a tent, one of those red tents they used to have. There's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. These are beautiful things. Dude, I would look at the Marlboro Miles catalog yeah. in awe, being like, wow, dude. Yeah. Yeah. All of these things you could get. None of it matters. The only thing that matters is uh, friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> here's the difference, though. It is a, it is, all of these things are inherently dumb. Anything you buy is kind of stupid, but it makes you feel good, and it's it's a nice thing. Yeah. And, and that's all it is, right? I mean, they're not, they don't change your life, but they give you maybe a little bit of joy, in a you know world where you need uh, every now and then you need a little joy. I think you in worthwhile investments are your home, your car, right? You know wherever you're spending a lot of time to yourself, thinking, quote unquote, meditate. We don't fucking meditate anymore, but right. when, you, when you're driving, you can't really be texting. I mean, I do, right? You know, sure. Um, but when you when you're driving, like you you're alone with your thoughts. You're listening to music, but you're sort of thinking through your life and all that shit. And if you're in a fucking shitty car, you're gonna just feel like shit, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I've been in a shitty car. I used to drive a, a Oldsmobile '88. Not even the year. That's the type of car. Yeah. And you, it would literally like when I when I would press the brake too hard, the car would shut off. Yeah. Like I I I've been in Mitsubishi Galant. I've been in old pieces so of my, shit. I just I would just buy for years. Yeah. The cheapest car at the used car dealership, like and not like a used car dealership, like like a certified pre owned no. Toyota. Like I'm talking about right. like a guy. Who and this, this Bentley cars. is certified pre-owned. <laughs> this is certified pre-owned Bentley. Good. 2018. Well, it's you, not Tim, brand new. You don't have to tell people that. Well, but here's the reality. It's, it's in, no different than a 2021 but or 2022. But people ask, my cunt up, friends. Can you look up the differences between the 2022 and the yeah. 2018? There's very few. There's going to be a honest. handful of them. But There's yeah, not that many. You, what were you saying? Bentley's not a high-tech car, meaning like, it doesn't have like the runner lights. Like when you get in a Bentley, it doesn't, you know, it's not like a new Beamer or a Mercedes or where they have the pink and purple running <laughs> Designed lights. Designed by a Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of ethnic. Yeah. It looks a little ethnic. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, the reality is this is more of an English gentleman's car. It doesn't, it doesn't have a horn that goes beep. -a -da 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 -da. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, this isn't a, you know, so they yeah, have my, some new stuff. My Audi, like literally half the technology is being able to change the lighting panels and everything. <laughs> right. It really is, dude. That's <laughs> the, all of the technology went into, I got a fucking white well, trim. Some people like when they get in a car to, for it to be lit up and to feel like a, you know, some type of carnival. Yeah. Because that's where they work or that's where they, their good family memories yeah. are going to a it's free a simple, carnival. It's a simple way. Yeah. They're treating, they're treating people like morons. They're going, right. you like flashing lights, don't you? Yeah. And we do. Yeah. I love it. For sure. I mean, there's nothing, there's Dude, nothing if wrong I want with it. to, if I was, I could match my lighting scheme to my outfits. And that's, yeah. they, they sold it to me that way. They looked at me when they, they're like, this Puerto Rican guy's going to love this feature. Right. And they said, they're like, you can match the lighting scheme every day to whatever outfit you're wearing. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong? Yeah. With I mean, it's that, it, that's such a, so the new one is going to probably, I don't even know these, di what these differences are. I mean, they, they both have a V8 engine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. It's a I have four a sport, liter. I have a sport package, which they don't even make anymore, which is faster. Mine, my engines might be even better. Whoa. And this um, is the, uh, this is the uh, 2018 right here. Four liter V8. Same shit. Yeah. Same shit. I mean, 
you know, and again, if you look, go to the interior of the 2022. I mean, by the way, is this not a relatable segment? <laughs> this is like the least relatable <laughs> of the 2018. Segment. I mean, there are, there are people. I, I have people watching this overdosing on heroin right now. <laughs> but if you look at it, look at it. Yeah, go to the next one, Ben. Go to the right. Right. Yeah. Can I tell you why it's relatable? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me why. Because they fucking oh, they watched you, dude. I remember. Yeah. I remember Tim once a month would ask me for an advance on his. I would. Six hundred dollar a month podcast payout. I would. And like the twenty seventh would hit, and yeah. he's like, "Dude, I need the money. I need. I need it in cash." I know, and you'd give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I would. I appreciate and that. It's fucking. And I would upload a photo <laughs> an hour later at a steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> fucking would. But it it's seventy five dollars <laughs> steak. Yeah, dude. It's inspiring for people to watch you. This is why people like you. That is yeah. fucking relatable. It's That's, like you're not yeah. you're, you're not fucking gifted anything, dude. You've no. been hustling and grinding for a yeah, long time. Yeah, no, I've been. It's twelve years. Yeah, it's a it's, long time. It's a really long time, and, and I think people see it like they I'm look thirty seven like now. Overnight. The best years of my life are over, and they were yeah. poor. Yeah, like the vast majority of my life, I would have rather have this money at twenty one. Yeah, because you have more energy. It's more. It's cooler. That's why the L.A. people now. Obviously, I have more perspective now, and blah blah blah. But the L.A. life that these TikTokers live is what's supposed to happen. You get yeah. famous at eighteen, you're famous until you're twenty five, and then you die at twenty seven or twenty eight. Yeah. And because it doesn't get better, and you did it, and you were famous at the best time to be famous. You didn't work for it. You didn't know what it was. You had no, now we have perspective, it's, you know, but there's something nice about just getting a whole bunch of shit. You don't even know why you have it. Yeah. And all of it's just fun. I, I don't even understand how I got laid when I was in my twenties. I was right. so poor yeah. and dirty. Like yeah. My body right. was dirty. There's well, what no, were you doing as for work? I was selling sh comedy club tickets. Right. When I first started in comedy, I was selling comedy club tickets. Yeah. And then, um. I mean, I would just fucking be out there like I was a street kid, dude. Right. I was like just a fucking like we'd smoke blunts in stairwells and drink 40s on stoops and right. fucking and there'd be like women that I'd hook up. And like I think back now, I'm like, how would any woman ever like? Yeah, I'm like a shitty comedian. Like, right. Just not like like how do you like how do you how does a woman spread her legs for an unfunny comedian? That's a crazy thing. He's trying to be funny. Many of them do. It's a crazy. By the way, thing. many of them have big houses <laughs> with unfunny comedians and live very oh, yes. well. Oh, I'm very sure That's they do very of, well. Yeah, we were talking about um, people that don't have money that want to go on vacation, and we wanted mm. to give a kind of a uh, guide to people that don't have a lot that yeah. need to take their kids somewhere because I, it's my belief that you got to go on a summer vacation. Yeah. Even if you don't leave your town, like some people staycation, go on a staycation. That's terrible. It's sad. That's garbage. It's very hard. You shouldn't do that. Have you, but you, you've even seen that. I was, uh, yeah, I see that all the time, but I was in, cause we go on the road a lot. So we're in hotels and you'll just see, a, uh, this happened last weekend in Providence. There's a family in the pool. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm going like, why would anybody visit Providence? Right. right. And then they were like, oh, we're from Newport. We're like 40 minutes away from here. We just like did a staycation. I, I look at this poor little three-year-old and I wanted to kidnap him and yeah. just release him into the parking lot. That would and be a Newport's better life. Newport's a nicer area. So it's weird that they <laughs> went is. to Providence. So what's going on is like the dad's into something weird or the mom is. There's no reason you go from Newport to Providence for a staycation. Something's going on. They maybe. wanted the pool. That was it. There's pools in Newport. I don't know. Something's Maybe. up. They wanted to get out of town. I don't know. But yeah. it's, it's, it, was, it was, I felt so bad. I think about that all the time. I'll be at like yeah. a gig in Atlantic City. And, and you you'll see, see a family. family. It's yeah. tough. It's fucking brutal, dude. And you see a family just at a shitty hotel. And it's usually like an indoor pool. Terrible. Smells bad. I might do that with my family as like a joke. <laughs> like yeah. I might, I might bring my whole family to Atlantic City to be funny. As a bit. As like a bit. Yeah. That like we're all in on and we're going to like... You know, yeah, and then just bring them and go. Here's uh, welcome to the. I mean, I did that when I was a kid. So yeah. I, my friend Rocky, who uh, ended up being gay, he tried yeah. to suck my dick when we were like in the sixth grade. So Interesting. I always knew he was, he was playing with Barbies when he was a kid. Yeah, real, uh, you know, real Tim Dillon. Yeah, what's he up to now? Uh, he sells real estate. Does he do well? I don't know. Uh, but I stay in touch here and there, you know. Yeah. But he fucking uh, now he's like very very out. But his family. We were so poor. Right. I thought his family was rich. Right. His family lived in like a nice trailer. <laughs> a nice, a particularly nice trailer. 
That's how rough it was. Yeah, it was. I shit you not, dude. And they would take me on <laughs> their family vacations. And I'm like, wow, dude, we go to Bally's in Atlantic City. Yeah. <laughs> His dad's just throwing bones at Bally's. You're like, I, it's your fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> yes. And the guy, you're, you're driving in a trailer to Bally's. This was, uh, I mean, yeah, dude. I think back, it's so funny how poor this family was. Yeah. And how I, and they looked down their nose at me. Like, I remember yeah. feeling like, oh, I was like, oh, I, I grew up, we didn't have a ton of money. Yeah. Like I had an in, I had a backyard pool. It was an in-ground pool, but it was six feet. So when you dove into it, <laughs> you had to dive out. Like you couldn't dive down. Yeah, of course. And a lot of my friends had the eight foot, 10 foot pool, yeah, 12 foot pool, or it was much larger. When you, when you were to jump in, you could dive straight wow. down. So when you, but when you, when you're up in the air and you realize I can't dive straight down, I have to dive out. To me, that's what poverty is. That's it probably, the thought. Yeah. The thought of how deep is the pool is poverty Ooh. to me because a big pool where you don't even worry about how deep it is because it just is deep. We have you just it. That to me is we use. So our landlord when we were kids, Mary Leone, she was this fucking old white lady. She's still around. No, no. she's very dead. But her, long dead. But her her niece and net or I guess her grandkids, right? They were like these kids, they were like, you know, they just had all like the fun toys. But once again, these people were all trash. None of these people were rich. Like, no, none of them. But they had like a an in-ground pool, but there was like algae in it. It just wasn't yeah. it was just a fucking garbage ass family. And uh I remember they would just like be in the pool and they would invite us in sometimes. But literally one of the biggest like cringy things in my life I think back is just one time I was like standing in the pool wanting them to invite me in. Right. And like just staring. And I think I was like, I want to go back in time and just fucking tell like, yourself, don't do that. What are you fucking doing, dude? Have some pride. The yeah. fuck is wrong with you? Well, fuck their pool. Go get your own pool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where where would you and your family go on a trip? Did you ever take a vacation? My mom would take us. You know, I I remember. And this was she was a little she did drugs. My mom was a heroin addict right. and a prostitute. Okay. And a prostitute. And I knew this. I knew my mom was a prostitute for as long as I can remember. Because I remember my, there was like this old guy who was my sister's godfather, actually. And I caught them like naked in bed together. And I remember even at like three or four years old, just thinking, I was like, well, she's not fucking him for pleasure. I was like, she's being paid for this. And I just right. sort of connected the dots. Very, even as very, a young child. Young child. I just, I just knew. I, and I sort of, it was, you know, I just knew that's what it was. Yeah, um, were you proud a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was collecting. I was collecting I, a commission on it. It is no. It's to me. To I got me, her the gig, dude. To me, there's something about that that is a little bit. You go, hey, mom is really working. No. Mom is working. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I think I sort of blocked it from my memory for a while. Yeah, like I, I didn't like. But I, I think back now, I just remember having the thought that this is for fucking money. Um, so yeah, my mom was fucking trash. So we were just really, really poor. You know, she wasn't, she wasn't a high end prostitute either. Like, right. Honestly, if you're a hooker, you, by the way, you don't need to say that. Well, that's crazy though. <laughs> I appreciate that you, you don't need to say, I love that you have to, you go, just in case anyone out there was wondering, uh, my mother, <laughs> She uh, was not high she end. She was an attractive prostitute. woman. In fact, if you go on my oh, Instagram, she's pretty, but you know, high end prostitute is not only attractive, it's like, it's a whole thing. No, they gotta be kind of. They're, they're hot. Well, first they gotta be hot. They're the hot. first and foremost, they gotta be hot. All right, go to but my, also, go to my Instagram be able, right they, now. They gotta have the money to travel. Go right? to Mother's Day. Okay. Go down right to the right. That's my mom with the red hair. Okay, right here. Okay, right here. My mom cleaned up. No, she's pretty. She's a pretty woman. She cleaned up. Yeah. Okay, that's my sister right there. Okay. Now, she would not be. I a just high look end. at you and your sister. This is what I think, and I say to myself. God bless this woman, because I would have abandoned you kids instead of fuck like instead of fucking to feed you two, which by the way, you're clearly fed. I would have abandoned you two immediately, like at a truck stop yeah. in Jersey. No. But good for her. She, I mean, I respect one what of a, my what a sad family photo. Growing one growing up, one of my women that I looked up to was a, a prostitute, my friend's mother, yeah. and she would explain to us how she was always a prostitute. And she was still kind of a prostitute and she took all that money and invested it in stocks and knew all about the market and she was very interesting. Really? Oh yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, she, yeah. My mom didn't do any of that. My mom bought heroin with it. Yeah. And I think when she was hard up for heroin, I think her prices would drop dramatically. Right, yeah. Then it was just kind of a... But she would be a $300 an hour hooker. Right. Did you... Did Mid-range. She ever, did she ever admit it to you? 
No, we never got there. You never broached it. Either. Never, never got there. She uh, were there men coming and going, or did well, you... that's what this we're paying her for. Right. <laughs> they, <laughs> but would you notice like different guys around? No. So this is when this is when I was really young. I don't think she was hooking when I was like at an age where I really had memories of it. Gotcha. So I was like three or four. Well, that was nice of her. Yeah. You know, she ended up. You know. Becoming a hairdresser, which is actually no, I have less respect really, for hairdressers than no, I do for hookers. Oh, much less. I mean, but here's what's nice about her: she didn't sell you or your sister. Some prostitutes, yeah. like you know, they, you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, in fairness to her, it was a hard sell. That would have been yeah. a tough sell. That, yeah. You and your sister. They I mean, that would have been a very rough. Like he, you got to be into both. If you're into both of us, that's a lot. Well, you got to be a pedophile and kind of blind. Be into fat cholos. Yeah, you got to be into. You got to have a fat cholo fetish as a pedophile. Like, imagine, are there those pedophiles that go to Epstein's island and they're like, yeah, I know you got all these thin, you know, white kids, but like. These, I want fat cholos. I want fat Mexican kids, not hot Eastern European. I want gathering of uh, the juggalos <laughs> cholos. <laughs> like, yeah. So we, we, our vacations that I remember, we would go to Seaside Heights, New Jersey. And I just, right. I, I remember. Because it's nice because it's the beach and she could score. She could probably, <laughs> oh. she honestly could probably just find heroin on the beach. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and what would that entail, Seaside Heights? Would you get a room somewhere? I think we would get. She called it a cabin, but I okay. What I remember it as was like a shed, and there was like one building that's almost like a shed with a couple beds. Yeah, you could enter in on either side. And right. Very very vague memories of these Seaside Heights cabins. Okay. Probably like fifteen bucks a night, something like that. Right. Some okay. really really fucking cheap. When you say enter on either side, I'm thinking like public restroom. Kind of yeah, like yeah. that. Almost. Like like I that. feel like you're like my memories were like there was like three bathrooms. There were no beds, and you could enter on either side, and there were hand dryers on each side of the wall to dry your hands. <laughs> and she would set up yeah. a bag, sleeping bag for me and my sister on yeah. the floor of this. So you would stay for two nights a night? Probably something like that, two nights. I, I don't even remember. On it, semi-annual sale is here, featuring the lowest price of the year on our most popular supplements, food, equipment, and more. For two weeks only, all of our products will be on sale at huge discounts. Save 25% off supplements like Alpha Brain, the memory and focus supplement that sold over 1 million bottles, or Total Human, the convenient day and night packs complete with essential vitamins, minerals, herbs, and amino acids, which make optimization easy. Take 20% off all nutrition products and stock up on some grass-fed whey protein or the extremely delicious and nutritious protein bites. 10% off fitness equipment like Primal Kettlebells and Steel Maces and 50% off all digital on at 6 programs, including on at 6 Bodyweight and on at 6 Barbell. Plus, get up to 60% off door busters like Hydra Tech, Instant, and Shroom Tech Greens and exclusive free gifts too. But hurry, the Onnit semi-annual sale ends today, May 29th, and all products will go back to their regular prices. Don't miss out on the best deals of the year. Learn more at onnit.com slash Tim. That's onnit.com slash Tim. And full disclosure, this is the company that was started uh, uh, and invested in by Mark Marin. Oh, really? Yeah. I like the protein bites. Have you ever had them? Oh, yeah. They're in Rogan's uh, vending machine. They're very tasty. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I take the alpha brain now. Yeah, uh, baby. I like an amino acid. You guys know I love break-in protection that my Simply Safe home security system gets me, but it's not always outside forces that you need to simply save protection from. This is Joshua's story, a Simply Safe customer from Indiana. A few months ago, he fell asleep with pizza rolls still in the oven. That could have been disastrous. Thousands of dollars in damage to his kitchen, home, maybe even worse. Luckily, Joshua had a comprehensive Simply Safe system equipped with everything to prevent break-ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires. He was startled awake to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm from his Simply Safe base station. Seconds later, he got a call from Simply Safe Professional monitoring. The pizza rolls didn't make it, <laughs> but Josh did. He believes Simply Safe probably saved his life that night. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love because often I'll put things in my oven and then go to sleep. And Simply Safe will prevent me from being cooked like a pizza roll. Protecting people when their guard is down is just one of the reasons more than 4 million people use and love Simply Safe. And with a comprehensive Simply Safe system, 24 7 professional monitoring, because that's what you need the monitoring. That's what makes it different, right? Oh, yeah. Because people are actually monitoring it, they care. So if you're laying there like a big lug with a bunch of pizza rolls about to blow up your whole house, somebody's going, look at this schmuck, and they help you. 
Um, I use this. You use it. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. It's simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon. That's simplysafe.com slash Tim Dillon. The best, the best vacation my mom ever took us on. Yeah. God, this is going to be rough. It's going to be so sad because you... <laughs> here's why it's going to be so sad. You've specified that this is the best. This, so is, the this best. is the top of the line. Top of the line vacation my mother ever took us on. Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, my God. <laughs> to see <laughs> WrestleMania 11. Now, it was cool. That's kind of cool. Because it was That's WrestleMania. That's not bad. That's was, actually not we bad. We were massive pro wrestling fans. Give it up for the... Hey. Give it up for this whore. She did, she did. It was the one fucking thing she really, she spent the money. Like, you know, I think at the time the tickets were probably 75 bucks a pop, which is a lot of money for her. Yeah. A lot of money. No, that's Three fucking tickets. cool as we fuck. We were like, you know, 20 rows back maybe. You saw us on camera. We were like along the gate. You, know, you and your sister. Me and my sister. And it was yeah. the best time ever. They, they do a fan festival. No, that's where actually you meet nice. all the wrestlers. Now I but, feel bad. No, yeah. don't feel bad. But very influential. If you look at the fan, the WrestleMania fan festival, if you, what we do with Skankfest, like, that was like one of the best memories. The WrestleMania Fans Festival, you show up, and it's not just fucking like autographs. They have a lot of interactive shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, uh, you're like, you know, you're 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 meeting the wrestlers, and you do meet and greets and shit, but they're like doing fucking other things. It's like shows happening. You know what's hilarious? And- Stan Hope goes on Rogan and brings up how cool Skank Fest this is. This is ridiculous. And then Rogan just shuts it down immediately and goes, You should do your own fest. <laughs> Stan Hope's like Stan Hope's and he's trying to like have a nice pitch. It's a nice pitch. <laughs> he's like, I did this festival, it's just the greatest thing ever. And yeah. Rogan's like, he was like, he was like, oh yeah. He's like, that's really probably because the comedy scene down in Houston is great. It's like there's nothing to do with the comedy scene yeah, in fucking Houston. It's nothing we to booked do with three it. comics from Houston. Yeah. We brought the fucking greatest comics from the world, mostly from New York City, to Houston right. and fucking did the most unique, fun, interactive, right. craziest comedy festival ever. Yeah. But Doug Sandup should just steal the idea. Yeah. <laughs> he should just take it. Joe's like, you should do your own. Man. The same guy who assaulted Carlos Mancia yeah. for stealing a shitty Ari <laughs> Shafir joke. The shittiest Ari Shafir joke that's ever been fucking written. Well, he stole more than that. I know. He yeah. stole a lot. He stole a lot. Right. But, you know. That was a straw. That no, but I'm kidding. You know, yeah, yeah, Logan's yeah. great. No, no, no. No, no, We love him. But, yeah. I mean, it is funny that he was just like... Steal it. Do your own. <laughs> just, well, it's not steal it. He just said, do your own fast. I think no. I, I think he's a little disconnected from what Skankfest is. I think he thinks like that's what Bert's I doing. Hope, by the way, I hope he's disconnected. He's got uh, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, I hope he, he's disconnected from he, it. Yeah, but I mean, like Bert, you know, Bert's doing his own festival. It's not the same thing though. Right. It's not. There's there's nothing like Skankfest. You got to go and see it and know what it is in order to fucking. And then you know, what is what would you say the difference with Skankfest is? Is it people get it's raped? A party. It's a party. Well, yeah. Right. I mean, well, they don't tell. Yeah. It's a party. Dude, here's you know, the thing with Skank all Fest. Things it's, con- the fucking, whatever they call it, the uh, here's Netflix what I is say, a joke festival. Here's what I will say about Skank Fest. It is an immersive experience. Yeah. Meaning that it is three days. It involves not only going to see stand-up, but you have like other events that comedians go to and will be at, and you yeah. can like mix with, you there's can meet comics. There's live fighting, pro wrestling. There's fucking just, there's mechanical bulls and fucking yeah. games and beer pong tournaments and just, it's stupid dude. it's a fun thing it's a fun it's thing it's a woodstock for people that like podcasts and it's the, the best podcast fans in the world best right. comedy fans of the world they 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 love comedy they love every they, time i've done a show it's gang fest it's always been great yeah. and every time we've done a live podcast it's gang fest yeah it's always been great it's gonna be super we're gonna do bastard radio yeah it'll be fun i'm forcing you it'll be fun no i'm doing it i told I you i would do it i know I'm Absolutely, we'll do it. Me and the great Nick Mullen, uh, I think we're going to do a state of the industry address as Bastard Radio. Yeah. So we'll, the biggest topics from the year, we're going to break down. Can I, I just want to cover, please, if we do a state of the industry address, we've got to carve out. Gringo Poppy? Who does what? I want to do <laughs> LA. I want to do the LA. I said we just. No, no, no. I want to do the state of the LA podcast scene. Oh, yeah. As part of the, as part of the state of the industry address is Gang Fest. Yeah. You and Nick can do everything else. Yeah. Everything else. That's yours. You cover Whatever. You, New cover York, you guys cover all of New York, television and film, yeah. every podcast in the world other than. And you could also comment on the state of the LA podcast scene, of course. Oh, of course. But I would like to. You need to lead it. My. Expertise. I just want to do the state of the LA podcast scene, the great enduring scene that will never die. Can we? And it'll be called the LA podcast scene, the scene that will never die, and it will have the photos of the people who are currently in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, can we play Word Association LA comic scene? Sure. All right, ready? You got to just fire it off. Don't be yeah. a pussy. Whitney Cummings. Drugs. <laughs> Bobby Lee. Korean. <laughs> 
I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Brian Callen. Ruffier. <laughs> Gringo Poppy. Kind of brilliant. <laughs> kind of kind of brilliantly brilliantly funny in a way that no comedy special has ever been. Because it's it's mysterious in a way. Because you're looking at it and you're going like, there's a lot of choices made and yeah. you don't know why those choices were made. Of course. Of course. Yeah. The comedy store. Uh fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I can't name another word. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. Well, here's what's amazing about the gringo popping. This is what's truly amazing about it, okay? Please. You're watching it. And you're in kind of, it's, it's, you're in a little bit of disbelief. Yeah. Because it is, I, I, I wonder, and I know he's trying to get good at stand-up, and I respect yeah. the hell out of that. The question is, what, did it have to be a special? No. That's the real question. No. No, it didn't. It, yeah. No, he, and I'm not he, one of these guys who like that's not, hates not, that's, on Brandon. That's not like, shitting he's on like him. a nice guy. And, and I know he's trying to be, you know, like, I, but I, the question I, is with that particular thing, you go, did that have to be? I said this on Real Life Podcast. He should have friends going, because here's the thing. He is a charming dude, right? Yes. Um, And he, I, I think, I don't know at all, you know, but I, I think he, he, there's probably something. That he's probably a funny. He probably makes his friends laugh, right? Yeah. I think that he's really great at, podcasting on that specific show for that audience, yeah. which they want MMA. There's an audience of people in America that want what he does yeah. and he does it for them. I am not that audience. Of course. But that's fair. But that's fair. And here's the yeah. thing. We, we all go out. Because I don't try care about. Yeah. Everyone stinks at comedy for the first five, 10 years. 20, 30 years. There's a fucking minimum of five. That's a, if you get good and start getting shit. Under five. five that's like fast. It's rare. That's fast. The, 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 one of the Michael only people. Michael Che. Like, who's my best friend. And he's Pete one Davidson. of the people. You're talking about guys that like they got like. It's rare. Very rare. Yeah. Very rare. And you see it and you're like, God damn, dude, those guys got good and they got good fast yeah. and they started getting things. I was pretty rare. I got pretty good pretty quickly. But again, I didn't really pop until I started doing this. Yeah, of course. That was what I needed to do. So, but that's the thing. That's like- stand-up is kind of gay and stand stupid. Up when we came up, you didn't Stand-up's even... kind of gay and dumb. <laughs> yeah. L let's be honest. Yeah. It's, well, I, when I watch Brendan do that, it's like, I, I, I go, here's a big, tough guy. Well, I should just see in a Ferrari and he should be able to rip people's faces off yeah. with his catcher mid hands. And I see him running around the stage going, oh. I silly. go, you're gay now. Yeah. You've yeah. become gay. You were, you Why were. Why are you gay? He was a fucking knight. He was, was, a, no, he, he was, was a, listen, a knight. He was a knight. He's a knight. And now he's a jester. Now he's gay. <laughs> he's a gay jester. He's a gay man. He's a fully gay man. When you watch a special, he's like, Whoa! and you go, what? Why? What is this disease? of? Maybe they should come out next week. You're, what is this? You're six, foot, <laughs> you're six foot six. You're an Adonis. You could beat up 99% of the people You could kill men and fuck women. And you don't have to fuck these skanks at the comedy store. Fuck Hot women. Annie Letterman. Fuck hot what the fuck women. is wrong with you? And he, instead, he's fully gay on stage in Dallas in front of 45 people being like, the lion is at my door. It's just, it's puzzling. It's, uh, yeah, you, you don't need it. When you don't need it. But that's the thing, like, um... You know, I, I don't. Well, I, feel, I, 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 feel, people, yeah. I feel bad By shitting way, on his me, comedy because no, no, I don't no. shit on people's comedy. No, 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 no. Me saying you shouldn't be a comedian is the highest respect I can pay you. Yeah. If if I look at you and go, you shouldn't really do comedy. It's me going, you are better, better than, than this. this yeah. I truly believe he's like better than this. Yeah. We all nobody, until you start to do this. This was nobody's. A plan. Nobody. No, I wasn't a little kid being like, dude, I want to fucking dance like a monkey for strangers. Right. And and pray to God that they like me and that they react to my words in a club. Yes. Or I won't feel anything. That's right. That's crazy. That's a fucking, that's pathetic. Really, honestly, yeah. if, if aliens came down and watched us doing comedy. It's gay. Making these sounds. And I don't even mean gay like having sex with men. I mean like, it's just cringe. Yeah. A little. Yeah. It's a little pathetic. I feel embarrassed that I need the validation of strangers yeah. and others should too. And even though we make people happy, yeah. it comes from the need. Yeah. And I just feel like knowing that. Is I would give up your happiness 
for my happiness. Just right. so everyone knows, their happiness is inconsequential in it's this. It means nothing to any, like what people say to me, they're like, your podcast got me through the quarantine. I'm like, you have no idea what it's done for me. I'm like, I'm glad it's helped you and it makes me feel good that it's helped them, but I'm like, you to, cope to, with to your, be honest. Your mom dying. Yeah, I'm like, I'm glad it helped you, but it really helped me, oh, you know? Oh, dude, I'm fucking having a weird fucking muscle spasm in my stomach. Why? Because I did sit-ups for the first time ever. Oh. Not ever, like yesterday. But but my point is that when I tell somebody, hey, stand-up may not be for you, it's not, it doesn't, it's not an egg. No, it's not. And uh, yeah, whatever, you just don't need to put out specials. David Tell puts out a special every eight years. And he's one well, of the greatest of all time. Why is Brendan Shaw putting out two specials? I don't even love the years? special that I just shot. And yeah. it's coming out because it, here's the deal. It's like, it's. It, I wrote the material two years ago. You saw the jokes yeah. two years ago at Vinnie Brand's yeah. Stress Factory. But my whole thing is I want to do it live as much as I can. So by the time the special comes out, a lot of it's topical, it's relevant. Yeah. I don't love it. I, don't, I didn't love the audience. I didn't love it. It is what it is. But, you know, I... I whatever people want to do with their lives, they can do. Yeah, that's of course. What, we live in America. More power to them. Yeah, we more, live in America. More power to them. Yeah, for sure. Um, um where do you think Brendan Shaw went on vacation? Somewhere nice, probably somewhere nice. Probably right? somewhere nice. Everybody's trying to steal your information. Companies, governments. That's why you need ExpressVPN. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, passwords, financial details. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed. A smart 12-year-old could do it. If your data is valuable, hackers can make a 1000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. It's time for ExpressVPN. They've got an encrypted tunnel that creates a secure encrypted tunnel between you and your servers. And internet hackers cannot steal your sensitive data. It's super secure, and it would take a hacker with a super computer over 8 billion years to get past Express uh, VPN's encryption. It's easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. Works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. So you can stay secure on the go. I use it. Ben uses it. We all use Express VPN and we love it. I'm telling you, you know what I like most about it? It's easy. It's simple. In, so, in Australia, remember how useful it was? Changing yes, it? Yes, because we wanted to watch Netflix and mm -hmm. they don't have the new Ozark yet. And yep. Ozark sucks anyway. Mm -hmm. Secure your online data today by ex visiting expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Tim Dillon and you can get an extra three months free. What? What? Extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. Everybody's running an online business now. It's so important. And you need to be focusing on growing your business. You don't need to focus on shipping. That's why you need to use ShipStation. They're a virtual back office. It handles everything that could cause you any type of uh, headache. You get deeply discounted shipping rates, normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies. ShipStation works with over five, uh, 45 carriers. Easily compare rates and delivery times to quickly find the best option every time. Works with over 300 platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more to automate processes like fulfillment and tracking so you can save time managing orders. 98% of companies that use ShipStation for one year keep using it for as long as they're in business. Don't let the big guys keep all the good discounts to themselves. Sign up using promo Promo code Tim Dillon, that's T I M Dillon, D I L L O N, for a free 60 day trial at shipstation.com and start saving with every shipment. We talk to a lot of Sam Talent, a lot of people use ShipStation mm -hmm. for everything they do mm -hmm. and they save a shitload of money. ShipStation is great. You get two months of discounted shipping absolutely free. Go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Tim Dillon. You go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Tim Dillon. Make ship happen. Where'd you go on vacation as a kid? The Enchanted Forest. Look this up. This is a place called the Enchanted Forest. My parents took me there. I'm almost positive they were trying to sell me to human traffickers. <laughs> is this uh, yeah, I think a Renaissance type fair? Uh, it's... Where is it, Ben? Yeah, this says it's in Oregon, but are you talking about no, when you went to Germany? That no, one it's like in like, fuck, it's in like upstate New York. And it was by Canada, maybe. It's in upstate New York. Okay. And it was like this weird place that they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were trying to sell me. Enchanted Forest Water Safari? Yeah, it's, yeah. An yeah, Old yeah, Forge? Yeah, okay. yeah, Old Forge, this yes, place. Yeah. Okay. The Enchanted Forest. It's like a water park. That's probably pretty cool though. It's when you're whatever. Kid, when you're a it's kid, it was probably yeah, cool. they got this guy, That's Paul, so Bunyan. Paul Bunyan. It was like one of those things where I think they thought it was going to be good. Yeah, like that's the other thing. But my you, dad, you, when you they, know, it sucks when like the coolest characters they have are like old. 
Yeah, it's like Humpty tales. Dumpty. Like yeah, they couldn't yeah. afford. They couldn't get anybody <laughs> better. Like Sesame Place. Yeah, or... no. And I we do that. We went to Hershey Park. We went to Sesame Place. Uh, we went to uh, my dad. When they got divorced, my dad took me to cool places because I want like because then it was like okay, I don't have to deal with your mother. Yeah, well, that's so then what's going he on now, like and then nice, it's also the, yeah. you know here's what happens when you're a divorced dad because I'm a, yeah. you know me and my my son's mother we co-parent, and I do a, a Father's Day trip with them every year. Yeah, and I just let him spin the globe. And that's right. Point wow. Wherever he wants to go, wherever he wants to go. Whoa. And look, he's stupid. He's nine. He's a child. So right. Can, and he can't spin that much. I, I can. <laughs> I can fucking sort of. Goad him into what if know. he spins a globe and he's like, I want to go to Sierra Leone, <laughs> I want to go to the diamond mines, I want to find blood diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad would take me to nice places because my mother wasn't involved. Well, and he wants to say, He wants it's a fuck you to the mom. Oh, like, I want my son when he grows up to be able to tell his mother, life, like, I went to all these places without you. I went to fucking Rome this summer because my dad I'm telling took me you, to Rome. A great kid's trip, and I told, I told Lewis, is Australia. Because it's just too yeah. far, but it's, it's a so great hard, kids' dude. trip because the animals, all that stuff, the zoos, it's a very cool trip. Yeah. You know, it's very cool. Uh, it's just a lot, dude. 20 hours on a flight with a kid. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, he's too a little much. bit older. I, I'll do it with him for sure. He's a mature kid, too. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to Rome this, uh, this summer. That's amazing. Yeah. My parents never took me. I mean, no. we took one trip to Europe when I was five that my grandfather paid for and the whole family went and I was so sick. The doctor goes, don't put him on a plane. And my mother and father went, well, we're going to Europe. <laughs> yeah, so he's going, <laughs> and to, he's going to Europe. <laughs> so you, there's literally a photo of me on Instagram a long time ago where I'm literally like a sick four year old yeah. on a cross, you know, going overseas to Europe. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's I, crazy. Uh, I didn't fly until I was 19. Yeah. 19 was the first time I was on a flight. I went to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah, with my girlfriend. Like yeah, we used to like a you know they were gra it was her graduation trip. I graduated the year before. Right. Um. It was my girl, and then the uh, lead singer of Coheed and Cambria. Oh, was dating my girlfriend's best friend, so he was on this trip as well. Oh, interesting. Just know Coheed and Cambria. I've heard of them. It's like a gay emo y type. They're, they do band. okay, right? They're great. They're really talented. They're like like very progressive, almost like a new age rush. Okay. Um, they're fucking yeah, but yeah, I don't care. Yeah, they were cool. But, well, good. Yeah, good. that was my first time on a flight. It's difficult uh, right now with with the, you know, a lot of families are having a tough time taking their kids, you know, places. Yeah. And that, I think, can be alleviated a little bit by trying to figure out, like, where did, let, let's look up where you went. You went to a place. Okay, so uh, well, people confuse Port Aransas and South Padre Island. South Padre is actually nice. And uh, people have given me a lot of shit for saying South Padre. No, it's not. First of all, it's not nice. I and don't think it is. People giving you shit or animals. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, because this is South Padre There's Island. nine nice places in the country. <laughs> the Hamptons, Malibu, Beverly Hills, Palm Beach, Jackson Hole, Aspen. There's like 10 places that are fucking nice. And Florida. Parts of it. So the place I went, and actually, yeah, Port let, Aransas. Yeah, this shit's all, fa everything you guys are naming is fancy as fuck to me. Yeah. It's like, I, I, you know, we didn't go on vacations. We didn't go so, to six So, by the way, they're making this look better in the things. They do this all the time. They mm -hmm. lighten the water. They make it look a certain type of blue, and then you get there, and it's not that. Yeah. But that's what it is. And then that's, that's what it ends what it up is. being. So that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what it is. And then Ben would go there with his family. They'd stay in like a motel mm. and uh, they'd eat like, uh, what would you eat? Like imitation crab and stuff. Yeah, they would eat like fake crab. Yeah. And and that's rough. Yeah, I never true. had it that bad. Like other than my mother was a schizophrenic and my fa I had a very loveless a family of right. people who hated each other. And I had the gay thing where you had to stay, a see, keep who you are secretive and I was a drug addict. But I... We never were there. Tim, like, was there anybody God. who was there anybody who found out you were gay before you came out, and you were like, "Dude, you got to fucking keep this under wraps." A few people I sucked off had suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> they were suspicious, but they didn't. They didn't go. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, there are people that thought so, but yeah. nobody like found out. Like to find out, you'd have to have like proof. Yeah, so I didn't. No, I didn't believe you were gay for like a year. Yeah. No, he's not gay. No, I mean it's still very much people don't believe it. But it's only because they don't know people. 
Yeah. Like if you meet people, you meet gay people that are not like what you see on TV. Well, I think that's an act. Very often it's performative. Very some often. Some of it is, but some guys are just very effeminate, but then some guys take it to the next level. Well, they lean into it. They, they go, lean into you know, it. They, there's a choice at one Gang, point. All black, but like gangsters, if you're really black, you're leaning into it. Yeah. Like if you're real, you know what I mean? I watch, well, I watch people, I watch like. Uh, you know people that lean in. Dude, I I, I watch, <laughs> I watch some of is. my black friends and they. They, I watch them write like an Ebonics yeah. on like social media. Yeah. And I'm like, I know you have autocorrect. You have to go through so much trouble <laughs> to write that way. Yeah. Why would you spend the time? It's so much more effort to fucking write that. But it's that, that identity. Yeah. It's an identity and you lean but into you, it. But you, what's know. interesting about you is you're, you're a Puerto Rican white supremacist. You know, as it no, says I, in the press. I, I, I'm a truth teller. Right. <laughs> but what's interesting about you is you and me bond in this way that we're we, we that stuff's gross to us when, when the identity politics gets yeah. like we're not ashamed of who we are we don't we don't hide any of it uh yes i pretend to have a wife and yes you tell people you're italian <laughs> but <laughs> no but we don't there's something about us we just went out into the group thing no we're not Groups also don't like, get, I, it I, doesn't, I think yeah. social media is training people to you know, put themselves out there in a certain way, right? And you right. and I both, yeah. right? I think we recognize, number one, what's funnier, but yes. what's, what's better, what's more relatable to sort of like really be uh, much more real versions of ourselves. That's you get right. a very real version of me and a very real version of you on yeah. these shows, right? right? I think, you know, a, a lot of other people, they're very protected in what they do and how they present themselves. Um, and in comedy, it's less so. I think comedy and podcasting much less so, and I think you and I much less so than a lot of our, our peers. peers. Yeah, our peers that do it as well. So you know that's um, you know that's you know it's just phoniness. You know you sort of see. I was I tweeted this. Like the Mark other day. Norman is a black woman. It's you like would never know. Like Mark Norman's a woman. You have no idea who he is. He's a, no, I don't know. Yeah. But I tweeted this the other day. You see people who on Instagram will respond to every comment, right? So yeah. somebody write a comment and then right. they write heart face emoji, whatever. Thank you, love you. And what those people are doing is they're manipulating the algorithm. Like Instagram will move your content further up um, and show it to more people if you're engaging with everybody, right? So it's just, a, it's a, and it's a sociopathic thing. And it's usually like hot chicks, but they respond to everything. And they're like, heart, love you, thank you. And you're like, dude, you're just like blind, you know, like blindly just going and saying that to everybody to, and pre pretending to like these people and pretending to have a real relationship with them just to manipulate an algorithm. It's sick. It's sickening. It's, it's really sick. It's fucking psychotic. It's crazy. Um, so, but yeah. But we see people do very well like that. Of course, no, no, no. You, the, anybody who's yeah. famous on Instagram, any Instagram model, any TikToker, they all do that. That's all they do. That's all they do. It's a yeah. part of their job. The same way you have to fucking, you're in your job, you answer emails in the morning, it's their job to go in. Some, very often they have social media managers that are doing it and they respond to every single thing. You'll see it. Yeah. Any influencer, they respond to every single thing. And what, and it just, again, I guess it just bolsters this idea that you're, that, that this is, this community you're part of, you're an active member of it. Well, I think most people yeah. go, oh, they responded. This is great. Right. And they feel that thing. And that's why they're there almost, And then it's, right? it's reciprocal. Yeah. And then they respond. To, yeah. Exactly. Okay. But the, I don't know, dude. I just, I respond to a lot of people on social media, but not everybody. Right. Right. You know, it's just not a fucking, you know, like if somebody sends me a DM, if I'm in, if I'm traveling, you might get a response. Very yeah, often. You I'll get respond a, occasionally. Yeah, dude. Just to yeah. some random fucking person and be like, oh, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah. But then, you know, it bites you in the ass. I have a guy right now. I wish you, dude, I guess he DM me a while ago and I responded. Then he DM me again. I was like driving or something and I just saw it. And I didn't say anything. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. And then he fucking DMs me again because I saw that with like middle fingers. Like, oh, dude, I guess you're too cool for me now. Like, dude, we're not friends. Like, I just, right. I, I responded to you once. So, it, whatever, dude, you're damned if you do, if you're damned if you don't, you know? Yeah. But I don't fucking play those games where you're, you're trying to just manipulate an algorithm. You're trying to, you know, trying to game the system. Instead of just being good, instead of being funny or being interesting, it's a lot of gaming the system. And that's what LA is a lot of, right? For sure. There's a lot of people that they didn't come up and they didn't go through those months where they were fucking, they didn't know where they were going to eat. They didn't know how they were going to fucking pay their rent. They didn't even, right. you know, they just, you know, it worked out very quickly for a lot of these people, you know, and it was a lot less of a struggle out here, it seems. Yeah. A lot of people out here, but the, the, the flip side of that and, or maybe the, uh, the, uh, the full picture of that is that a lot of those people are dead inside in ways you can't even imagine. Yeah. Like their, their material successes do not even, they don't belie like the idea 
these people are husks, <laughs> cold husks of human beings yeah. that don't like the success doesn't even matter anymore because they they have forgotten everything that is uh, organically about who they are and everything. And it's interesting. And they're yeah. just kind of, they're all on like some like low dose of some type of drug. You, you made just, an interesting point before when yeah. we were driving, just talking about how you, you got to pay for it. You gotta, we you owe know, debts. We owe debts. So I think this is a great, can, you, can you get me a lighter, please? Where, why aren't there lighters in the studio? Wow. I mean, you know what well, it is? Ben. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's a, you want to talk about ungrateful <laughs> and like absurd. Yeah. And oh, maybe it's in my car. Maybe maybe it's in my car. I mean, there should be lighters in the studio. But again, it's like it's it's it's. I mean, this guy. You want to talk about someone who's went on a nice ride? Yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, he's, anybody could do this, Ben. Just so you know. Yeah. The, let, let's just say all podcast producers, <laughs> anyone can do your job, and we love very you, few people. Yeah. Very few very people few can people do, can do, do my job. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyone true. can do the podcast producer job. But they don't think it's that. Self -taught. No, they it's self-taught. At this point, the technology is not, it's intuitive. They think it's their show. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, all of these people, from Jamie Vernon on down, but they think gotta, it's their show. You know what it is, dude? You yeah. have to, they have to feel that way in order That's to be right. good at their job. I remember when and I- And he's great at great. his job. But like, anybody could do it. Well, you, who would else be great at his job is an app. Anybody. A laugh app where I would say something funny, I press it and go, <laughs> do that. They would do this when I worked at Equinox. My last yeah. day job ever was uh, was working at Equinox selling gym memberships. Yeah. And every department, they would give you like a Braveheart speech, right? They'd be like, oh, the fucking, you know, <laughs> the front desk, you guys are the heartbeat of yeah. this club. You're the first people that they see. Without you guys, this club doesn't exist. Same exact fucking speech to the salespeople, same speech to the group fitness people, same speech to the maintenance people. Right. Without the maintenance people. Yeah, without the, without the maintenance people, <laughs> Equinox. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You're the beating heart of Equinox. I'm the telling maintenance you, people. They did. And you'd see the these old Mexican ladies, they, they'd fucking yeah, have they'd this put sense their of chest pride. Out. Yeah, yeah. They'd, and like, they, we are the first line of defense. You're they, the Marines of the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they would feel, but everyone would have this sense of pride. And together they all came, they create a fucking great business. A really right. legitimately great business. So yeah. you have to make, he's a front Yay! desk. Ben Ben is a front desk girl at Equinox. That's right. That's what he is. He's right? a hot piece of and ass a, at he's Equinox. cute, but he's the fucking first person they see. And he should feel, he should feel important. Because it's not a bad job to be the they front can desk hire, in They can hire another hot girl, sure. Yeah, yeah, but but, they, but you're here. You're here. <laughs> you know what, Jessica? You're here. And you know what it is? They could hire some other big-titted bitch. Mm -hmm. And Ben does a lot more. He edits, he did things like that. But the uh, front desk at Equinox does a lot more, too. Yeah, dude. It's not just checking people in, dude. They have to, I, I believe they have to... They know the whole gym. They know the property well. They answer the And phones. they use the word the property. They have to learn... They'll be it. like, I know the property, I know the gym. Like, they, yeah, they learn. They're the liaison between new members and the salespeople? Right. Come on. No. Yeah. They're important. It's an important job. Jamie Vernon, like we were talking once and I I, I wanted to end it. Jamie Vernon's like, you know, our, our show and our show. And I go, what are you? <laughs> you say our show? Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. That's what happened to Red Band. That's why he's on the fucking Outskis. Right. He got too cocky. That's why Jamie's, Jamie needs to not go down the Red Band path. He's going to be producing fucking... Well, Joe, you know what I mean? I don't want to even get into these statistics because they're troubling. <laughs> But it just came out that Joe is now getting 500 listeners an episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's over. These are this is the statistics. This it's isn't over. me. Yeah, these are statistics. I won't even do the show anymore. He calls me all the time. Lewis will not do Dude, it. He fuck calls me all the time. I'm like, no, Joe, beat it. I, I who this new phone. How do we get you in touch with him? Because he's not responding to you. He will not respond to me. <laughs> can we? Can you call him right now and ask him why on speaker? Okay. <laughs> you really no, you're not going to. He really will. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Who's this? Who is it? Yeah, no, he uh Who is it? I think we can we can Is this Lewis? We can how about this? You remember how he was gonna sneak Anthony Cumia back into Sirius XM? I didn't I don't So when don't, Anthony got fired from Sirius XM, yeah. he went on Jim and Sam and he was gonna sneak Anthony back in, like with him. Oh the whole fucking thing. Why don't we sneak me in? Next time he does one of those fun comic hang podcasts with Ari and, and Norman or uh, Tim got so much fatter. <laughs> I'm just under a coat. Oh, it's Lewis. <laughs> What's up, man? That would be a lot. Well, you should move to Austin. 
Yeah, that's it. Then he can't avoid me. If you move to Austin, no, it's I over. mean, if you, by the way, it would be hilarious if you yeah. moved to Austin and he still would not even that's acknowledge it. you. No. And every Instagram post was like, you're just like, just bought a house in Austin. He's like, you know who should buy a house? Doug Stanhope. <laughs> Stanhope should buy a house in Austin now. Yeah, you literally get a job doing maintenance on his building. <laughs> You're literally pushing a broom in the building. He won't look at me. No, he won't even look at you in the face. He has two Navy SEALs stand uh, between him and you at all times. <laughs> Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four aptogenetic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. With one-seventh, the caffeine is a cup of coffee. You get the energy, the, the anxiety, jitters, or crash of coffee. Each ingredient was added with a purpose. Cacao and chai for mood and a microdose of caffeine lion's mane for alertness. Cordyceps for to help your physical performance. Chaga and Rishi to support your immune system. Turmeric for soreness and cinnamon and antioxidants. I love this. You love it. Mm -hmm. We use it. It's great. We've got energy. It's crazy. I love the taste. My favorite ingredient is lion's mane. I like to be alert. Mud Water is a Whole30 approved, 100% USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and it's kosher certified. Mud Water has launched their new evening ritual, the Rest Blend, a non-caffeinated tea, which you love. I know. That promotes relaxation and rest because the best morning ritual starts the night before. Say it with me, sister. The best morning ritual. ritual. No, I didn't mean that, really. The best morning ritual starts tonight before. Go to mudwater.com slash Tim. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash Tim. Mudwater.com slash Tim to support the show and use code T-I-M for $5 off. I'm telling you, all of these ingredients were uh, uh, curated. They were chosen with a purpose. It keeps you alert, but you don't have that crash of coffee. Mudwater.com slash Tim. What about, uh, what do you think, uh, what's going to happen now if you... I feel like uh, what is because this whole LA podcast scene is does seem a little bit uh, dead. It's gay. They're all gay. They're all gay. They're <laughs> it, it, you know I'm not even and I won't even name specific names, but yeah. the whole drama that's going on in the LA podcast scene, it's one of the gayest things I've ever seen. This is like high school level drama so where silly. they're like calling each other and they're talking shit and they're silly. threatening each other and it, it's like guys in New York the drama is all of 50. you can't afford your rent. Yeah. So it's actually real drama. Like the New York podcast scene is somebody being like, I am homeless. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah. It's a weird thing how this everyone is, is so in poor in New York. This is people in mansions talking shit about each other. In New York, the drama is like, my parents just kicked me off my the, the family plan and I'm 38. I'm 38 and I don't have a phone. <laughs> my roommate moved out and I was not able to secure another roommate for that room this month. <laughs> I'm actually going to kill myself. <laughs> New York drama is like people hang themselves. <laughs> yeah, people try to kill themselves. Yeah. My my bed is covered in rat feces. I I just, you know what it is? Best I think about New York, do you go to like, people have money too. Like Big J's got money. Big J's money. Because he's, he's, nice, he's got talent. He's got a nice apartment. Big J is one of the funniest people on planet Earth. But it's not Earth. nice. This is what New York is. New York's dude. nothing's nice. It's, you're like, everything's expensive. And you're like, it's this sucks. It's dirty. There's garbage everywhere in front to of your building. money in New York, you have to have like $100 million. It's fucking it's wild, crazy. dude. It's a wild thing. And you go down to Tribeca, one of the most expensive neighborhoods in New York. Yeah, it's like everything a, looks like shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a heroin. <laughs> Dead. Yeah. everywhere yeah it's like this is like one of the most expensive buildings You're like what the fuck is going on it's tiny yeah it's true it's wild well it's just a different life yeah it's a different life yeah. and it makes you funnier it does but the funniest people in the world come from la <laughs> yeah <laughs> the funniest people in the world are good-looking yeah. surfers and people that are mixed martial artists yeah they, That's uh, where funny comes. Funny comes from hot people. That LA just needs to struggle funny a little more. Funny comes from when hot people get bored. Yeah. If we know one thing about comedy, it's when a hot person is bored, that's when the genius yeah, comes. Yeah, it's true. When a hot person has nothing to do that day, they open their mouth and the genius comes out. Yeah. The biggest struggle for like LA comedians, this is the one you hear, it's like, it's like, dude, I struggled, dude. I was a doorman at the comedy store. The biggest struggle is when they actually have to do comedy. Yeah. <laughs> like, the biggest struggle is when they actually have to do it. Yeah. It's like the vast majority of it is like, here's a photo with me kind of doing it. And then when they actually, when, when people actually, like, go, like, do something. Mm. That's why a lot of the funny people out here, whether it's me, Annie, B Bill Burr, and I'm not saying I'm any in any of the categories of these. I'm not putting us in any category. But, like, Sebastian, those are East Coast guys. Yeah. Those oh, are yeah. East Coast people. Oh, yeah, they're all all the funny ones are East Coast guys, right? You know? That are transplants. Yeah, I think. I mean, nobody's really from LA. Who the fuck's from LA? I don't know. Yeah, none of them are. Nobody. Right? Well, there's just Aaliyah. 
I guess. Lily is from LA. Yeah. And he's funny. I don't really know his stand up that well. I don't either. I've, I don't think I've ever heard him tell a joke. He's a funny guy. No, no, no. I think he what murders. he does to women is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that. I said women. <laughs> They're all adults. I backed them up on this. These young women. <laughs> I feel bad for the guy. It's like, it's it's like we all got to pretend that hot, that 18 year olds aren't hot. We're no, like, yeah. They're hot. Tim, by the way, Tim Dillon, his yeah. view from his, I don't want to give too much information, yeah. but it's directly into Beverly Hills High School. Absolutely. Into the cafeteria, you look down into it. I have it. a sponsorship program. <laughs> for, it's psychotic, for dude. I had a stop. By the way, you know what's funny? I'm texting True Jordy. You know him? Mm -hmm. This massive busy guy. British guy, yeah. I think, because it's a, I, I have this Irish twink I talk to and I hang out with. I'm texting True Jordy. I think it's the Irish twink. Literally, this is the this is the conversation I have with True Jordy. That was I swear to God, I'm reading, I'm reading the conversation. Okay, um, listen to this. I'm not even kidding. He goes, "This Brendan Chow versus Bobby Leach is wild, bro. It's a car crash. Hope you're in the UK soon." And then I go, "I'm gonna call you in an hour." I said, call me when you wake up, winky face. We'll plan it. <laughs> True Jordy. He goes, sweet, thanks. So I think, then he goes, then he texts me. He goes, you yeah. awake, bro. Do you I know what True God. Jordy looks like? Get up, True Jordy. Pull, 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 pull. I'm mortified. <laughs> Get up, True Jordy. I swear to God. Look at True Jordy, okay? This guy's oh, a This is what you tank. want. Oh, no, you want a twink. You don't like yeah, the guy Yeah, no, big. but this guy's a tank. Listen to this. He texts me. I text him, right? I go, you awake, bro? You awake, bro? Ready? He texts me back. Yeah, just listen to your podcast about Brendan raping you. I'm crying laughing. I text him back. You're allowed to rape me, winky face. <laughs> no, you didn't. Swear to God. <laughs> you're allowed to rape me, winky face. He texts me back. I know because you won't say anything because you want it to be about the work. I respect that. LOL. He goes, you know when you may be in London? I go, I'm flying you here. Did you forget? <laughs> he doesn't understand. You're stroking your cock the whole time. I go, I go, I'm flying you here. Did you forget? By the way, I know, here's the thing. I know this yeah. type of texting. Yeah. You are masturbating while you're doing this. It, it, it was in my hand, maybe. And then I go, I'm, I'm flying here. Did you forget? Now I start to worry. I'm like, is this twink? Does he have like a dementia? Which I'm fine with. Yeah. But he goes, I go, Oh, who is this? And he goes, Oh, True Jordy Brian. I'm like, Oh my God. How embarrassing. I felt really embarrassed about that. That's hilarious. But, you know, no, nothing's, nothing Chris did is proven. No. So uh, the reality is, I'm a person where I go, Hey. Also, I don't think what he did. Was it wasn't illegal, and I don't give a shit if you think a guy's creepy. Right, I'm a, it I, doesn't I, matter. I, I don't fucking care, dude. And and there's the a lot of fucking thing, there's a yeah. lot of creepy people. In fact, most people are creepy. The worst, you just don't yeah. know about their fucking creepiness. Louis C.K. He was just being a creep, right? A little creepy, a little creepy, dude. Be a little fucking. It happens, dude. It's it's the worst thing that Leah did was that he produced a school play. <laughs> it's the worst thing he did was he he. I think he funded and, and produced a school play. I don't. I, I don't actually know that he did anything. My understanding when it's it was never all happening, been proven. it was all like eighteen or nineteen girls. It was like a girl that was like seventeen, right. I guess. And when he found out she was seventeen, this he was, always said this no. was the creepiest thing that he did. Right. He found out she was seventeen. Then, like a year later, yeah, after she had turned eighteen, he hit her up again. And that's a it's, little bit. It's a little bit. It's good memory. It's not. But it's not fucking grooming. It's no. he's not a teacher. He's not a fucking no. person in his life. Dude, he likes hot young girls. You know, right. Most guys like hot young girls. Most guys don't have the opportunity to get hot young girls, right? right? So they they go they deal with their fucking hey. fucking hag wives. You fuck your <laughs> hag wife. And so nothing was proven. Yeah, and and even if whatever was proven, I think everything that he was accused of was just sort of him being a little bit of a douchey, creepy dude, which most guys are. Right. Most guys are most guys are way fucking worse than that, to be honest with you. Most right. guys are fucking pieces of shit. Um so I don't I never really you know, I think it's kind of funny. I think it's all funny. Like, I tease these guys, and I talk about this stuff on my shows, and I think a lot of people in L.A. think that, like, Legion of Skanks and me, like, we, like, are trying to troll them. And it's like, no, dude, 
It's just sort of the elephant in the room. It's a story. When Callan yes. gets fucking canceled for something, it's a big story in comedy. Right. And to not talk about it and not talk about it in a funny and again, way. And that's a story where it's like 20 years ago. Yeah. It, you know, listen, I don't, whatever everyone's experience is, and I've talked about it before where I go, is it possible that he had one idea of the night, she had another idea? I'm sure. Very and, possible. Very possible. And this was not what it's being portrayed as. Yeah. Uh, and that when we look at those dynamics of people that meet up, maybe they're drinking, they hook up, and then, you know, you, you 20 years They're later, also soulless actors. They're LA soulless actors. I mean, well, I, I, this, is, it's, it's, this is my thing with Meghan Markle. She's like, oh, they're racist. And I'm like, of course they're racist, but you're an actress. Yeah. So I don't, I can't believe, <laughs> I'm going to believe you. I'm choosing between the British reptilian royal family and yeah. an LA actress. They're the same person. Yeah. I'm like, these, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, you know, a lot of the, it's it's just a silly. It's, they they got so it's almost like say like I know Pete Davidson pretty well, right? Yeah. And sometimes I'll talk about him on my show, and I feel bad sometimes because I'm like I really like I've always really liked Pete, always been a really sweetheart of a guy, right? But he's so famous that it's I'm not talking about the Pete Davidson that I knew from the comedy scene. I'm talking right. about this celebrity thing that's fucking right. Kim Kardashian and roasting Kanye. It's like it's so much bigger. Then and and I would feel bad if Pete Davidson ever heard us like talking shit. Right. It's not even really talking shit. It's just sort of poking fun and making fun of the whole situation. Yeah. Um. He might come to me one day. But like, hey, dude, why would you say that? That like hurt my feelings. And I, I'm like, dude, you don't have feelings anymore. You're famous. You're, on, you're right. You're a billionaire. Yeah, you're, you just gotta get, release yourself. And also, like, I don't really feel bad for people that are fucking millionaires. That right. Get, made fun of online i don't feel bad for you that's right you that's that's your fucking biggest problem i feel bad is for that people, people that on reddit have, are yeah. saying mean words about, are you out of your fucking mind right. you're a millionaire right and you care about what somebody on reddit says there are people that's that crazy. cannot eat yeah there are people that don't have the money to pay their rent that cannot get their kids insulin my don't have care. right now, so those those people, my audience, Jeremiah is, Watkins, <laughs> <laughs> we know them. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins is doing the star maps in LA, <laughs> trying to show people houses. He's flipping signs. He's flipping signs. He's just trying to show people. He's selling fruit with Mexicans right now on the freeway. Jeremiah Watkins is trying to sell bottles of water on the 405. So the reality is, it's, you know, those are the people you go, it's, you know, people can say whatever they want. It's just kind of like I learned a long time ago. I have a very thick skin. I get trolled. I got I got trolled by the Opie and Anthony subreddit right. years ago to the point where like I was posting, I was going back at them and it was like they went fuck dude, they I mean it was like they made their own subreddits that were dedicated to me. Right. And it just literally gave me a thick skin to it. Right. Like, there's nothing that anybody could say. There's no word. Here's here's what's happening. This is the physical action. A stranger somewhere in the world is going like this. Right. Whether they're good words or bad words, the physical action, my, actually what it is. My name, Tim Dillon, is the same name as a guy who works at Marvel. And literally in his Twitter handle, he says, not the comedian. Yeah. Because all day, <laughs> every day, people just tweet at this guy and go, you're fat. I you're hope you gay. get AIDS. <laughs> you, I hope you get AIDS and die. You're a fascist. You piece of shit. You sat next to Alex Jones. You, you did a podcast with Alex And this guy's like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm a, yeah. I'm an artist. You know, the same thing. There's a guy named uh, John Jones. Yeah. Who's not John Jones, the fighter. Right. But like every time John Jones gets into some more trouble, he gets like a hundred messages and he, you know, same thing, not John Jones, the fighter. It's like, yeah, it's fucking, uh, it's a difficult, it's you a gotta, very you, difficult. You got to develop a thick skin. You, you lean into it. You, and when objectively speaking, trolling is funny. It's really funny. There's that yeah. great moment in South Park. Do you remember? I don't know how much you watch South Park. Not a ton, but I know it's brilliant. And I've watched a bunch of it. There was a series they did. It was a few episodes yeah. in a row where they were, where the dad became an internet troll. Yeah. It was fucking hilarious, dude. It right. was so funny. When, and he's, and he's trying to get somebody to understand it. Whoever it is, they ask him, they're like, why are you doing this? This is, <laughs> this yeah. is so dumb. What are you doing? Why would you yeah. do this? And he just, he, he almost like loses control. He's like, cause it's, funny yeah and he just yeah. can't like he it's right people that don't get that it's like frustrating well, it's like it's people, frustrating. there's a lot of people out there you got free time yeah you're bored it's it's a fun way to fuck with people right yeah and you are many of those people maybe are not doing 
uh, what they want per se. Maybe they're like working at a job that's kind of boring and yeah. it's not that fulfilling and they go online and they fuck it's with it. It's entertaining people. as fuck. It's entertaining. It's inter- I do it every time when I'm on a flight. Yeah. Every time I'm on a flight, I'm bored for five hours. I just sit there and I start just trolling and arguing back and forth with people. It's so fun and so silly. So if you separate yourself from it and realize that it's just a stranger saying something that's probably not valid... Then fucking the problem is when it's valid. I think it starts to affect people, and well, that that'll happen yeah. sometimes. People will will pull on a thread and they they get something. You go, oh, that one actually hurt a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's part of it, and I also yeah. think part of the problem is like there isn't a, an element of like people going like, here's your house, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Here's your address. Here's where you I've live. Had that. Yeah, they, 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 but they, it's, there listen, was a, there if you was have a, a fam, if you have a family, you have, they, you know, have that's family. a concern. They, there was a, an article that came out that said I was a proud boy, right? right. This this completely fabricated article, right? Um, actually, it wasn't fabricated. Yeah. Okay, I am a proud boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the leader of the New Jersey chapter. Of no proud boys. Yeah. No, what happened was there was a bunch of proud boys that were fans of like Legion of Scam. Yeah, of course. If people don't know the the. You know, Gavin McGinnis started Proud Boys while he was on Anthony Cumia's network. Now, my podcast was also on Anthony Cumia's network at the same time. So it was just a ton of crossover. Sure. And they started this group as like a fucking gag. At first, it was just a, like a, they were yes. just trying to be. And then it turned into something super politicized and, right. and super like they were going out to to be counter pro. If you're a fucking like, funny group, but you're counter protesting, you got to look in the mirror. And you're like, right. oh, you're not a funny group, dude. It's, it's not, not funny. about cereal. Yeah. It's not about yeah. punching each other in the arm. Right. If you're counter protesting in fucking riot gear, then it's something different than that. And I'm not even necessarily demonizing that. No. Cool, go fucking go. You want to you go fight in a Portland cool. park? Have fun. Have, have at a it, fun idiots. Sunday. You guys can beat the have shit out of each other with fu- bike locks for it's all I give a fun, shit about. It's a fun, nice weekend. Uh, I enjoy watching it online, right? So there was a bunch of Proud Boys, though, that were fans of like Legion of Skanks, and they were right. fans of us. And they had a blog, like some Proud Boy newsletter, right? Um, and after I fought at Ellis Mania, they named me Proud Boy of the Month. Right, right. So they go proud boy of the month. The, the context is they were just naming. They were, you know, naming whoever, whoever. Right. They they right. would they would have said it was the Rock. Had the Rock, you know, right. done something that you know they they were a fan of his. Um. So that came out, and I hit them up. I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, if right. you're a fan of mine, you would understand why this would be. Right. And I've never. I'm not. I'm not shitting on the Proud Boys. I'm not shitting on what they do. But let's get real, dude. You. It's it's a fucking scarlet letter. You're if involving you, wear you that, and you have nothing to do with it. You want to wear that scarlet yeah. letter? Wear that scarlet letter all fucking day long, dude. And I'm not going to kick you out of my show for wearing a Proud Boys hat. I don't give a shit. Dude. I don't even know what that even is. The, the pra- same yeah. way I wouldn't kick somebody out for wearing a fucking Antifa fucking. I, I don't kick any. If you pay the helmet. money, I don't kick anyone. Out. I don't give Unless a shit, you dude. Start yelling. <laughs> Yeah, so yelling shit, then it's over, right? Yeah. So I hit the guy up. I was like, dude, you got to take that down. That's crazy. But the internet is forever. And, you know, people, you know, they use, I guess, some sort of like way back machine or whatever. And they found this article specifically. And then they, you know, they wrote a whole thing about how I'm a proud boy. They said this tattoo on my arm was uh, because I'm a fourth degree proud boy. Yeah, it's just bad. It's the number four. It's just a shitty tattoo. It's just a shitty no, tattoo. No, it's a good tattoo. It's actually, it represents chaos theory. It's a double pendulum. It's not even a number four. Okay. It's a double pendulum, which makes this design, which represents chaos theory. Did your mom which... get that for you when you went to <laughs> Seaside Heights? <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, I got, I, I mean, you know, no, I got this for my son. I got yeah, this for my career. I got it for everything. We could be anywhere right now, Tim. So that people, the, the infinite are, amount of decisions yeah. that we could have made in our lives. Yeah. Literally, dude, it's crazy. The fact that me and you are sitting here across from each other is a, an actual. Cre- it's so unlikely. The fact that Ben's here, the fact that these lights are here, it's so unlikely that it's a small fucking miracle, right? And that's right. what this tattoo represents. Yeah, not fucking a fourth proud degree boys, proud boy, yeah. which is you know dumb. And so, and people just started. Uh, people, some guy wrote an article. Yeah, about then they that. they share it, and then they were like, you know, proud boy lives in this town in New Jersey. Um, they actually had the town wrong, which is funny because I have a generic name. I think they right. found a different Luis Gomez. Right. Um, but it was still like I was like, and then uh, you know, I won't even say his name, but one of a, you know, one of the comics that sort of trolls me online back in New York. Yeah. Um, yeah, he started posting about it and he said he started retweeting the article. And that's why I really started having a fucking big problem with this kid. Cause like, no, I do have a family, I do have a house. Your intent. That's when it goes too far. Your fucking intent is to put my address out yes. there so maybe somebody will see me and come up to me and my family. What do you think is going to fucking happen there? Right. What the fuck do you think is going to happen if somebody right. comes up to me and my fucking family? Yeah. That's a crazy thing to do, especially, and this is my problem with that kid specifically, he knew I wasn't a proud boy. 
He knew right. what was going on. Like he was right. completely aware. And that's where I go, that's a fucking irresponsibility. Just be real. That's you when it goes too far. Is. Yeah. That, in that's my opinion, when it's too far. Yeah. I, and I, I'm not fucking, I would never give out somebody's address. I would never, I know we make jokes about doxing people. No, I don't really want people to to do that shit. Um, but it's, uh, it's fucking hot in the kitchen, dude. It really is. And in a weird way, I'm, you know, after Trump left, now it's cooled down a little bit. Because I feel like the people on the left, they feel like they got to they, they don't feel like they have to fight so hard. They got a little bit of a W. Comedy is sort of lower on the rung of priorities. Yeah, as it should be. As, as it should be. Yeah. But if Trump runs again, it's going to get hot in the kitchen again. It's going to get hot in the kitchen. It may get so hot where it's like, it's uh, it's scalding. Yeah. And I don't, get, and I don't give a fuck about politics. So, right. you know, you know. None of us do. None of us do. We all have ideas and values and things, but then we also realize... Our job, and this is the problem, is like, you know, you can have fans that believe everything. Yeah. I have fans that believe Trump's Hitler. I have fans that believe Trump's the greatest president that's ever lived. Yeah. It's not my business. I don't really care what my fans believe. I yeah. I care that I'm doing my job. I care what I believe. I don't give a shit what the people in the audience believe. How do I even, how would I even know? It's inconsequential for me. Right. And my game that I'm playing, who the president is. Right. right? If the president, whoever the president is, and this is what, you know, we, we said before about gas prices, right? It's inconsequential. If that's where my, my like, I'm focused on those things. Everything from gas prices to who the president is to all this shit that I truly, really can't control. I know that you can. Mm, right. You can't. I'm, I'm hyper-focused on playing my game and sort of moving forward. And those are variables that have very little effect on whether or not I'm moving forward. That's right. Yeah. Luis Gomez, where can the people find you where can they where can the people support what you're doing is Skankfest completely sold out Skankfest is completely sold out um, how many tickets do you sell we do 2500 people per day okay so very exclusive very exclusive it's not um it feels like a big party it's one venue four rooms going on at the same time uh, you're special yeah my special's up my old one's up on youtube i'm doing i think we're doing uh gas digital is going to produce six half hour specials this summer and i'm going to do another half hour for gas digital uh, uh the, the gringo poppy way buy my special we'll put it on gas digital you should just buy it. buy it flat out you should just buy it flat out i'll sell it to you five hundred dollars put it on gas Digital. let's go I was thinking. No, we're gonna we're gonna more. put about on YouTube. We're gonna put about on YouTube. There'll be an extended cut on Gas Digital, uncensored, extended, a few more jokes. How are you gonna choose the comics? Um, we have Rebecca Trent and Christine are Evans are uh, executive producing, and um, you know, yeah, and they they produce Gangfest with me. So I think we're gonna do one with me, Dave. Looks like maybe Mike Racine, Aaron Berg. Yeah, okay, a few killers. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, probably six or seven of them. So look out for that. Uh, also, I'm on the road a ton right now. Go to lewisofskanks.com. I'm going all over California. I'm going to San Diego. I'm going to Ontario. I'm going all over Texas. I'll be in um, Dallas. I'll be in Fort Worth. I'll be in uh, Austin. Fucking Emus, Pennsylvania is coming up. Albany's coming up. A lot of stuff coming up. Lewisofskanks.com. Me and Aaron Berger are going on tour all over the place all this fall. Aaron Berger's hilarious. Fucking killer. One of it'll the dir be, dirtiest be, comics. A great there. show. And uh, yeah, check out my podcast. I do three podcasts, uh, Legion of Skanks, Real Ass Podcast, and Yo MMA Rap. They're all on my network, which is gasdigitalnetwork.com. You don't have to subscribe. You can just go and listen to the latest episodes and watch the latest episodes for free right on the website. Um, or you can subscribe on iTunes everywhere else. And there's a premium side as well if you guys uh, really like it. You guys want to get the archives and all that. Luis so. Gomez, thank you for coming Michelle out, Gomez. letting uh, representing New York comics podcasters, yeah, yeah. chopping it up here with us out uh, in L.A. Mm. And... Um, you know, we love you guys in New York, and we miss you. It's good to see you. And uh, yeah, I love you, Timmy. I love you guys. You we, know I have a, a ton of respect for what you do. I look yeah. up to you. I look at what you guys are doing. I take influence from it in very many ways. And, uh, yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's really nice well, to. Well, we, we also look, in the same way we look down on you guys. Yes, you know, we absolutely, <laughs> we look down on you, and we appreciate what you're doing at that level. And we appreciate that. Louis, thank you.